Welcome to the Not Well Behaved Women's Podcast. I'm still not Brit. I'm Rose Emily. I'm Tori. And I'm Tia. Today we will be discussing something that is near and dear to my heart, the mall culture of the 80s. Yeah, so the reason we kind of got onto this topic is this is kind of one of my new Roman empires. Um, sorry, Rose Emily was giving me a weird look. Um, <laughs> it's just my face. <laughs> Um, this is one of my kind of like new-ish Roman empires because, and I'm going to shout out this YouTube channel, Jake Williams from Bright Sun Films. I love you. Um, I love your videos, but I got like the, he does all these videos called like bankrupt, abandoned, like where he talks about all these different companies or places or things that have gone bankrupt. Like he did one on Bed Bath & Beyond, Sears, mm-hmm. Macy's, JCPenney, like stuff like that. And like the rise and fall of these huge retailers and conglomerates like he did um fry's electronics which was like a chain yeah. out in like the wet like west coast um fry's electronics featured in the movie nope from 2022 by jordan peele that's the only reason why i know what that even is <laughs> i only know because of bright sun films but I, I emailed jordan peele i want him to make a movie out of this comic it's called Philadelphia. yeah i want him to make a movie out of it Sorry, total side tangent. Jordan Peele, if you're watching this. <laughs> oh, because obviously Jordan Peele is watching he might be a some unwell nerd. women. He yeah. might be a, I a emailed him. I emailed him. I'm like, dude, you've got to do this. Anyway, sorry. We're going off on a tangent. It's, Continue. It is It is a day. This is why we need Brit. No, literally. Brit, <laughs> Brit will be like, on track. Um, so you're probably wondering what this has to do with X, <laughs> Y, and Z. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're just like, so anyway. So anyway, it has nothing to do with this, but I want to talk about it. Um, Because it's our podcast. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, okay, wait. I need to be mature and responsible. So anyway, (laughs) back to the topic of the mall culture of the 80s. So this kind of started off as just kind of the, what I like to call rise and fall of malls and mall culture. Excuse me like through like from like the 1960s when the mall I, the idea of the mall really took off like there were malls present before that but we'll get into that kind of history in a second but up until today where obviously we have a lot of dying or dead malls or abandoned malls entirely all over the country i think i read some statistic that was like there are 300 abandoned dead malls just across the u.s which Granted, across the U.S., that doesn't seem like a really big number, but 300 individual places have either been, like, abandoned or torn down or whatever. So, I just find the whole thing really, really fascinating, and I do have to credit Bright Sun Films with getting me into this content. I just, I think it's so cool. So, the first of the, like, enclosed mall idea came in Minnesota in the the mid-1950s as different retailers are kind of really skyrocketing to like the fame that they are known for today like places like Macy's and JC Penney and things like that what we would call anchor stores or like the really big department stores that are like at the corners or the end of hallways of different malls so once there was like the kind of like big move to the suburbs like from the cities and we start like after World War II start moving out towards the suburbs and just be kind kind of becoming more rural less urban things like that people needed places to go shop there were outdoor malls there were what we would call now strip malls but they were also called drive-in shopping centers things like that um and then kind of as time went on you get what we know now as the mall which is like these enclosed buildings with a million different stores and Annie Ann's or Wetzel's Pretzels or whatever you... Orange Julius. Orange Julius, Dairy Queen, things like that. And just to add in for some New Jersey representation and fame, the very first fully indoor shopping mall was in Cherry Hill, the Cherry Hill Mall. Um, And again, that was in big part because of the growing suburbs and this need for consumerism in those areas. Specifically in the 1980s is when that kind of idea of consumerism is at its peak. So I think this was just an offshoot of the automobile cult. Yes. Yes. Because as people, gas was cheap. Like, Mm -hmm. I am not as old as this is going to make me sound. But I literally remember when my dad would complain because gas was 
35 cents a gallon. Oh, my God. 35 cents. Yeah. And, um, I mean, granted, I was very young, but it's still stuck in my mind, like, 35 cents for a gallon of gas because I came along in the, I guess it was the late 70s, early 80s when they had the oil embargo. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't get gas every day, at least not in New Jersey. Uh, you couldn't get gas every day. You could get gas on odd or even days oh mm -hmm. when your license plate lined up and the stars aligned and that was the day you could get gas. And you could get like $2 worth of gas, um, which is why everybody had these huge cars back in the day. But anyway, the mall was definitely an offshoot of the culture of the automobile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and that's why malls now are known as these like or were known as these huge cultural institutions because they centered so much around daily american life in that period i think if i'm remembering correctly the cherry hill mall in the plans for it there was like a big point of planning for the parking and the mm -hmm. parking lot surrounding it to account for the cars so yeah. that's actually like where i grew up i grew up in Pennsylvania. oh yeah so the cherry hill mall was They've expanded it over the years, but back in the day, it was, uh, I'm trying to remember, I want to think Bamberger's, mm -hmm. which was the precursor to Macy's, and it, let me tell you, if you shopped at Bamberger's, holy cow, you were richity rich. And then the other end, then there was um, a Sears at the other end, and that was just like middle class America. Mm -hmm. And then a J.C. Penney's was added on later, but it was this block building in the middle of an oasis of parking yeah i think in its heyday it was estimated it could hold a thousand cars i don't want to be any place that a thousand cars worth of people is shopping yeah absolutely not but um yeah it was just the mall culture it was a thing like stranger things doesn't even really do it justice no because before malls there were independent small mom mm -hmm. and pop stores kind of like words matter bookstore yeah. they were the norm yeah. but then the malls came along they and killed them all it, they did they and really if, did yeah if you if it if it didn't exist in the mall you didn't need it yeah doesn't that sound kind of familiar like if amazon doesn't have yep. it you don't need it yeah um, but Amazon has everything. Including coffins. Huh? Huh? Strangest thing in the world. I was coming home from the Red Cross. It was like 4.30 in the morning. And um, I happened to drive past the funeral parlor where in the town that I live in. And shout out to Clayton, New Jersey, Barkley Funeral Home. Um, and there was a truck offloading coffins. And it said Amazon on the side of the truck. And I was like, no way in the world. Amazon carries coffin so of course i had to go home and google it because i just couldn't believe it you can buy a coffin for at the time it was like 700 dollars. i was about to say how expensive it was like but can you get it on prime i don't know it's almost prime day guys yeah. i don't know but i'm going to check I into it up. Yeah. seriously yes. but they know. had um they had pink blue and neutral oh great okay, thank god they coffin. had neutral right right and it was like I'll six or seven hundred dollars oh which is a total tangent and has nothing to do with the malls oh, but what if i just get that now and that's just my bed and store you it know, aren't they like padded on the inside oh yeah it's a full on coffin i've done with well. you people <laughs> but it's pink it's pink and it's satin and it's you know it's satin yep <laughs> listen yeah yeah you had me at satin get a comfortable position for eternity there we go. Okay, so that has nothing anyway. to do with what we're talking about. Sorry, I went totally now off Now we're talking tangent. about coffins and our vampiric dreams. Yes. But malls, yes. yes. So anybody that's ever seen, and um, Caitlin can testify for this, um, I do events for a, a local community, and one of my pet peeves is the episode where the mayor is going to have this 4th of July extravaganza, and he's like, I, haven't, I have to plan an epic 4th of July in four days. That is the most unrealistic part of Stranger Things. Not happening. I don't care who you are. It's not happening. But also they talk about um, like the mall culture and these. You, listen, I remember being a kid and you would get the bus, public transportation bus, and you would take the bus. In my case, it was probably about eight miles at 10 
we would go to the mall and hang out at the mall. We'd go to the movies, we would eat, we would shop, we would go to the arcade, we would do what kids have done forever. And then when the mall closed, because I think the mall closed kind of early then, like at seven or eight, we'd get on the public transportation bus and go eight miles home. Our parents hadn't seen us all day. Why? Because we were at the mall. That was just life. The mall was life. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I saw, <clears throat> excuse me, I saw a lot of Reddit threads about this. Like I said, I find the human story super, super interesting, excuse me. And, um... <laughs> I found it super interesting and I saw this one reddit thread and this is not like a dig at Rose Emily at all but I saw this one that said r slash old people old ask old people something like that and they were talking about like mall culture and all those things and how like because I was trying to find like different iterations of mall culture in like the 60s 70s 80s 90s 2000s etc because I grew up in the 2000s so I kind of remember the like mid 2000s mall culture ish but like i was always with my parents because i was a child i was very young like too young to be going to the mall by myself kind of young and plus our we don't really have public transportation where i'm from so like i couldn't even if i was like 13 and responsible i couldn't just get on a bus to go to the mall anyway and that was in 2013 so like that's already when the malls are dying I digress. I'll get to the 2000s and the 2010s later, but I saw a bunch of Reddit threads that essentially said pretty much the same thing. You go to the arcade, you go hang out at the food court, you go you go because you want to go flirt with this cute guy from your class and you know that Zach is going to be there on Friday night and stuff like that. And I just think that's like so fun. Like I feel like that is such a period that we're never going to get back because of online dating and just the internet in general but I'm nostalgic kind of for a time that I was not alive mm -hmm. and I do credit some of that to Stranger Things I absolutely love that show and I love I love the whole mall scenes because it centers around that mall which fun fact is an abandoned mall in Atlanta Georgia and that's why they were able to film there and why it like looks so good like other parts of that mall are decrepit and mm -hmm. just abandoned and horrendous because it's an abandoned mall but they cleaned up the like sections that they were using made up fake stores or like made the stores that were originally there and like put stuff in them and whatever to make it look like an active mall which is crazy to me you literally they literally took an abandoned mall and made it into a mall that's crazy to me it it's is crazy. pretty cool too because um they really Oh, it was so glamorous. I cannot even really express. It was so glamorous. Like that was like, obviously I started going to malls really young, which is a whole Gen X thing. That's, that's yeah. like a whole other thing we yeah. could talk about. But, um, it was so like, there was a shoe store. It was called Baker shoes. If you did not get your shoes from Baker's, you were worse than useless. You just had no right to breathe because that was the only place to get your shoes. And like, um, they had, um, I don't know, do you guys know what candies are? It's a kind of shoe. <laughs> they were basically blocks of wood that had leather on them. Listen, people that are, what, that are hearing this, they will, of a certain age, will know exactly what I'm talking about. And, um, but they were basically just blocks of wood with strap of leather and little studs on the side if you didn't have those shoes you just had so, no yeah you had no right to exist oh gosh, so but the malls were just so so glamorous yeah. and like you could just yep that's them what yep that's them yes oh they're pretty cute that's them that's crazy yeah and uh, like yeah we would walk miles in them it really is just like a block, a block of, of wood. wood yes exactly yeah. hello yeah i'm sorry <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. not no yeah. sorry there's there's another thing that came up the second one yeah that doesn't look familiar to me yeah no yeah but those candies okay. they were everything you got them at baker's and uh if you didn't have them just you're useless you're useless. You were ostrac ostracized. Don't even show your face. Nope. Don't. And definitely don't show your feet. 
because nobody had any use for you. But um, so they were, so, um, and I keep going off on a tangent again, but the mall culture of the 80s was everything, it was real life Disney Channel. Mm -hmm. It really was. Like the um, Stranger Things with that incredibly horrific outfit that oh, Elle wore. Yeah. That jumper. Oh, oh, oh God, awful. Like it, but we. Which which one was the, the black one with like the shape, the colorful shapes on it? Oh, I like that. I yeah. like it too. Well, you I would have fit right in in the eighties. I was gonna say I would literally wear that now. Yeah. Well, we all did. Yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, continue on. I'll stop interrupting you. <laughs> well, we kind of talked about this off camera, um, but the idea of malls and mall culture, like starting from like the sixties and going through like the nineties. In some ways, when you think about it, it was not that long ago. Like, it wasn't this, like, it wasn't eight, the 1860s or something. It wasn't, like, uh, like however many years ago, 150 years ago. But at the same time, it's not like it was yesterday either. Like, when you think of, like, JFK's assassination or you think of the Korean War, the Vietnam War, things like that, they seem so deeply entrenched in the past. They seem yeah. so far away. But then... <laughs> At those, in the, like, same time period, mall, mall culture was on the rise, like, things like that. So, just to kind of think about, like, just kind of putting it in a weird kind of perspective, that's also why it's so fascinating to me, is it, like, exists in this, like, liminal space of both being yesterday and also being a million years ago. Yeah. Nope. 